rise of kingdoms as we know it is about to change forever the new update that was just announced revealed the introduction of formations and this change to open field fighting in rise of kingdoms will either make or break the future of this game so today i'm gonna give you guys my thoughts and opinions on everything what's going on guys cheers haven't done that in a while but guys we're so close to 40,000 subscribers i had to give you a cheers now look i'm not gonna sit here and read this entire thing to you okay a bunch of other youtubers have already done that i'm assuming that you know that this new update is coming in november but it's going to be bringing a new talent system it's also going to be bringing ranged combat alongside the formation system and all three of these changes i think on their own would be a massive update so the fact that they're all coming out at the same time is going to be insane but what everybody is wondering is is this change going to be good for the game is this going to add a new dynamic of strategy of gameplay depth or are these going to be new systems that are implemented into the game that are just simply pay to win like we constantly see in these updates now before you guys go in the comment section below and call me negative and that i'm making a big deal out of this i am going to come out and say that i'm actually pretty excited for these changes okay i think rise of kingdoms needs a breath of fresh air and these changes could be that breath of fresh air that the game needs but objectively okay it's also important to call out what this could actually be which is is another implementation of pay to win systems that's not my opinion it's just that could be the case but let's not work on assumptions let's go off of what we know for sure and honestly even though this page is really long and has a lot of information it actually barely scratches the surface as to how these systems are really going to work in the game because these look like such massive changes the first thing I want to talk about is the talent system now the talent system here looks like it is a new talent system for you specifically as a player so currently in the game we have talents for specific commanders right you have talent builds for Guan Yu or for Artemisia for example here it looks like you will have talents for your account or your city in general when you enter into a specific season of conquest story I don't know if this talent system is going to be brought into all season of conquest stories or if this is only going to be implemented into some of the new stories that they've talked about here in the uh, in the post I'm not really going to cover this new kvk format because honestly the new kvk formats have all been bad it's just they've just been bad we'll just wait and see when it comes out hopefully it's good I, I want it to be good but like the last like five kvk stories have been trash my real question is is this system going to be in all season of conquest or just the new ones to me it does seem like it will be a temporary talent system because it says here in each season governors will need to set their strategic focus so what i'm worried about here is that this is going to be a new crystal tech system right that's the case for crystal tech is that it resets every time you go into kvk if these talents which you unlock with strategy points according to this image here if these reset every time you enter kvk how do you get the strategy points is it from a bundle is it from killing barbarians is it some other way is it a set number of points for all players that you get access to right as you enter kvk or maybe as you're going through the chronicles of kvk you will be all players will be given a static amount of points that they can spend again we don't know anything about this system other than it's probably going to be reset after every single kvk we also don't know the details of these of these different branches here we don't know if you're going to be able to put some points in support and some points in leadership for example or if you have to really commit to all one tree we have no idea but what we do know is that there are three trees according to this image here and they're going to be focused on either field battles siege wars or city development so siege wars we really don't understand that phrasing right because right now when we think of siege we think of the unit and really there's no use for that unit however that will be changing according to the formation system and we're going to talk about that in just a second so it's possible that the siege uh, warfare tree is going to tie into formations and the use of siege units moving forward if I were to guess however based on the limited knowledge that we already have my understanding is that the leadership tree may be something to do with 
rally and garrison leaders the warfare or open field tree is going to be for just fighting in the field and the support tree is going to be for basically the farmers the kingdom banks things like that or players who maybe haven't hit city hall 25 yet so they can't really participate in war too heavily they're going to use this time to really build up their account even faster and honestly i think that's going to be good especially if you want to take a kvk of downtime right where you know you're not going to be that active um you could just pick this support tree and use the the duration of kvk as a sped up farming session right you're going to be able to gain more resources or gain more troop training speed or whatever these uh, different talents might be now there are other games like rise of kingdoms such as land of empires that already have a sort of talent system for your account or your city there's also uh infinity kingdom that also has a talent system for your city and i think that this is rise of kingdoms attempt at doing something similar to that while also making it a new feature for upcoming kvks again i don't know the impact that this system is going to have i think it could be really interesting and add more uh, value to players who are playing the game in kvk but it also could be a crystal tech 2.0 where you have to buy bundles to get strategy points and and then you get at the end of the tree 10 percent all damage like you know that's what this is going to be obviously that's a net negative for the game so I don't think that will be the case I mean we already have crystal tech so why would they need to implement a second system just like that but it's worth noting that again with no information we're just speculating and I wish that maybe Lilith would when they announce systems like this they would give us a little bit more information about it because otherwise we're as a community sitting here like wondering is this going to be good or is this going to be so detrimental to the game that I end up quitting because I think a lot of players right now um who've been playing for a long time at least are on the edge right and i think a lot of you who are new to the game you're loving it and that's great i still love rise of kingdoms um but hopefully these these changes will all be good so that way we don't see another mass exodus all right moving on let's talk about ranged combat okay we know we already knew ranged combat was coming to the game ever since tempest clash first came into the game we knew that they were going to add ranged combat through the rest of the game and here we are we are finally going to get it now I will say that you know obviously they tested this with Tempest Clash and then they added it into heroic anthem power up right where you could build your arrow towers and have ranged combat in that way and so it looks like they've had a long time of testing to making sure that this works right going from a an isolated game mode with no consequences to a kvk where there are some consequences to the outcome to the entire base game having it right obviously that's the biggest impact that they could do is implement a system to the entire game so i feel like they've tested it for so long that they feel that it is balanced and ready for the game and that is very exciting now if we look at something like call of dragons which is the new game that is being released and developed by lego games who is the who is the company that makes rise of kingdoms right so basically two teams within the same uh, development studio we do see there are some issues in call of dragons with this it seems like ranged combats are uh, maybe a little bit more powerful than other combat uh types so how they actually take that and balance it here in rise of kingdoms is going to be interesting now it's also worth noting that uh, call of dragons is like in sort of closed beta so obviously all the balancing hasn't been done there yet so we can't really use that as a direct comparison because that game is not finished right so I'm not trying to make the claim that they failed there and they'll fail here I'm just saying like that's what the state is in that game and you have to take it with a grain of salt because again it's not out yet but the way that they're going to be balancing this range combat seems to be in the form of a formation system and I think that this is a necessary complexity to add to the game because as the game currently plays if you just add the ability to deal damage at range given the current mechanics of the game it will always be better to deal damage at range I mean that's partially why skill damage is so good in the open field right now it's because you can deal damage to a target that isn't even next that isn't even hitting you right it, it could be just be nearby right that's free damage and so basically the way that rise of kingdoms already plays is that the meta is to deal damage uh, to targets that aren't directly next to you so again I think they had to add another layer of complexity to the system in order to balance it otherwise ranged would probably always just be better I mean it's just an actual extra feature that some units and armies might have that others might not so how are they balancing this well it looks like they've added uh new formations they've added player collision to the entire game and they've added the blockade system to the entire game that's what it seems like to me based on how this reads and honestly 
I am again excited for this to come I'm excited for the strategy that this will bring but I'm extremely worried especially because my experience with collision in the game was horrible I, I truly think that it was just a net negative because it makes you feel like you can't do anything in massive open field fights which is where rise of kingdoms shines right a massive open field brawl is when you're having the most fun in rise of kingdoms right and so if you add a system that makes it more frustrating to do that which from my experience is what collision did for me um then realistically that's not great right however perhaps you will actually have um a way to deal with that frustration by picking the correct formation so again i'm going off of information that we don't really have here we don't know how these formations are going to work but what i will say uh, is that this is this i wonder is is this cosmetic only uh or will the troops actually matter here so for example right a formation of units in the real world which is what this is historically based on would be made to accomplish different things so for example I, if i'm understanding this correctly and, and if you're a historical buff you can tell me if i'm right or wrong but it seems to be the case that the wedge formation was typically used to attack blockades so really you would have the most amount of soldiers in the center of the wedge with the best units at the very center and you would put so much pressure on a single point of a barricade basically or against a, you know if, if if you have a a line of troops all standing in hollow formation well then this point and all these troops coming through that hollow center basically is going to crush that barricade right again i could be wrong i'm no historian on this stuff but we need to understand as your army gets low right like let's say it leaves your city with 200,000 units and then it gets depleted down to 70,000 units are you maybe going to lose this front line of troops or maybe the back line of troops or maybe you're going to lose this front portion of the actual wedge what I'm asking here is is this just cosmetically how it will appear on the open field based on your choices when you left the city or will the actual troops remaining indicate the effectiveness of that formation that's something that we don't have answers to just yet but I think it will be very important for how this plays in the game but let's just theorize for a moment that the wedge formation will be will deal more damage to a blockaded formation in the open field let's say a player you know you have player collision they they start the blockade feature uh, or or system for, with that army uh, and then you leave your city in wedge formation maybe you deal more damage to that blockade or perhaps if you are in uh ech echelon formation or perhaps the hollow square formation maybe you deal uh, more damage in blockade mode or maybe you deal more damage if you are a ranged unit in a particular formation right or let's say that wedge formation is most effective with cavalry units right that could also be how this works and we have no idea if any of this you know how deep is this actually going to go it could just be the case right that hollow square formation will just give you five percent health wedge formation will give you five percent attack and echelon formation will give you five percent defense right that could i mean that could just it could be just cut and dry that simple right um i don't think that that's going to be the case because it seems like they spent a lot of time trying to figure this out and it's incorporated with ranged combat in in, in, in itself so i think it's going to be a little bit more in depth than that but really there's there's just there's such a spectrum as to how in depth this could go now the other thing that i'm curious about and this comes from land of empires is that that game does have formations and many mobile games that have war strategy have formations because they were so important in historical warfare but in land of empires you actually have to train your units for a particular formation right so let's say you want to do the square formation you can have square formation level one versus square formation level 16 right and of course the units in square formation level 16 are going to be more effective in that formation right so that adds an entirely new system it opens a brand new pandora's box to where how are formations going to be decided in rise of kingdoms will you just send out a a, a march and just pick the formation that bets best fits that march and then you're good to go or will you actually have to train units or you know they could add a new building they could add a training ground building that will basically add the formation system and you'll have to gain experience in each individual formation and as you do that your army will become more effective in that formation so you could specialize in the wedge formation or you could specialize in the hollow square formation right we don't know these things because rise of kingdoms hasn't told us again how in depth this is going to go 
how are they going to implement this system and so i'm just giving you guys a bunch of ideas and things to think about regarding how this could affect the future of rise of kingdoms and that's what i said at the beginning here the game is going to change forever because of this system right and that's not even to talk about some of the other nuances in these images this little line with the arrow obviously that shows what direction they're attacking or moving or whatever the case might be but why is the barricade and arrow farther away for the siege units does that imply that they're going to deal damage at range there's so many little things here that we have no idea about and so we are forced to speculate now I will say if the formation system comes into the game with a a new building and you have to train your formations and it's essentially like a whole new thing that requires experience and maybe you have to star up the different formation structure I, that would be horrible to me okay so hopefully they don't do something like that but the last thing i want to talk about with formations is its synergy with civilizations right because if you go down here uh it does show that they are Im interested in um refining the visuals for different civilization units uh here this is like a, a triple bow ballista from ancient china so it looks like they are focusing a lot on that as well and how it could actually look in the open field here I, i'll try to zoom in a little bit better i'm sure you guys have seen this image but regardless you know if we start to see civilization specific benefits for particular uh, formations so for example in ancient sparta you have the phalanx right that obviously we don't have sparta in the game we have some commanders from sparta like uh, leonidas for example but let's just say the next civilization that comes out in 2023 is ancient greece or it's ancient sparta whatever you want to call it okay will they deal more damage in a particular phalanx formation right maybe they deal more damage in wedge formation or hollow square formation right it could be the case that you know if you have a just using this as an example let's say you pick china as a civilization perhaps your formations that use the ballista deal more damage right and that's exclusive to the civilization if that is the case we now have a new reason to pick particular civilizations in the game and so again we don't know how deep this is going to go but what i'm sure about is that this is going to change how the game plays forever and so i'm really hoping that this was you know they've done extensive testing for these systems before implementing them and, and again i'm giving them the benefit of the doubt i think that they have because it's been so long since they first announced ranged versus when it's actually coming but these systems being tied to open field fighting and your civilization and ranged combat and also potentially even this new talent system i mean they are in, they're adding so it's just a this is a bomb coming into the game and whether or not this is going to explode it and make it into this great you know more complex more fun more enjoyable open field ex experience or if it's going to explode and crumble the entire fabric of the game we have no idea but this is no light update this is probably the biggest update that we are going to see in rise of kingdoms since they added equipment to the game i i mean i again i can or or maybe even a crystal tech right like they, they there's not been an update this massive to the game and i just really hope that this does what they hope it will do which is bring old players back add more engagement and breathe fresh air into the game for those of us that have been playing the game for a long time i will say though once again if you have to pay for strategy points through a bundle that will be horrible if you have to use experience special new experience tombs to level up your formation that comes in a bundle that will be horrible and if they add new ranged commanders into the game that are game breaking and then now you have to basically ditch a bunch of your old commanders to start getting new ranged commanders that would also be horrible so again i hope these systems focus on what's what's so good about the game already and expand on that rather than kind of just cannibalize it now let's go ahead and we'll talk briefly about this uh these new commanders are coming late 2022 so we should be seeing these commanders possibly um within the the new update coming in November which is going to be insane by the way um they did say that they're adding a new commander type are these going to be ranged commanders like I, I don't really know how that's going to work because they have the engineering tree right that was a new commander type it was kvk specific but it was the first time that we ever saw that type of commander unless they plan on taking engineering and bringing it into the entire into the base game right that's something that they could do and in that way I guess it would technically be a new commander type but yeah this is going to be really interesting how this changes the game if you guys have a ton of legendary commander sculptures hoarded right now it's probably a good idea to keep hoarding them at least until November until we see 
what these changes are and how big of an impact this has into the game because right now if you dump all your sculptures into artemisia for example or ramses uh you know those are you know commanders that are getting to be a little bit old at this point yes they're good now but are they going to be good in november we have no idea now we do have a uh, zu liang i don't know if i pronounced that right or wrong i've already talked about him in another video we know that this commander is confirmed it's probably this gentleman on the left here the guy on the right uh i don't think that this is going to be sargon we did speculate on that and it did sound like that's what was said when this commander was first discussed however this image here to me looks like it might be uh an italian commander based on the helmet and also the um this is a a flail here but there's also a variation of this that was mainly used i believe in in italy uh so we really don't know anything about this commander right here i have no idea again i'm taking a shot in the dark here by saying an old italian commander uh that that's my best guess but really we we have no idea i mean this is just a, a black silhouette like that doesn't tell us anything so there's a lot to look forward to in rise of kingdoms uh and again i am optimistic i hope that these changes are good and are going to breathe fresh air into the game um fingers crossed because the magnitude of this update cannot be understated and if they mess this up it, it, it's going to be horrible right uh and one last thing that i want to talk about right is with formations uh and 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 with the, the new talents right i think one of the things about rise of kingdoms that people really like is that the game is complex enough to where you can make choices and see the impact of those choices but it's simple enough to where you know what you have to do and when you have to do it so for example you can choose what commanders you want to use in the open field you can choose what come uh you know units you put, put behind them and you can choose what equipment goes on them and then you go fight in the open field right it's simple the open field fighting is easily easy to understand uh and, and that's that right if they add and when they add the formation system with ranged combat and this new talent system uh, on top of all the systems that are already in the game I'm worried that this is going to continue to get more and more complex. The game is going to get more bloated and it's going to be less relatable and less interested uh, or less interesting to the casual players, which is a vast majority of them, right? If you are watching this video, you are not a casual rise of kingdoms player. You are a hardcore player who plays this game extensively, right? I know it sounds funny to say you're a hardcore player. Like it's a mobile game who cares, but realistically you are the most engaged type of player in rise of kingdoms. And I think for people who download it on day one are they only going to get access to formations once they hit season of conquest like these systems are adding on top of each other and sometimes adding more complexity while it may be fun for those of us who've played the game for a long time and we understand the game really well it all it may be a barrier of entry for a new player it may be daunting it may be too much to take in for a new player and i know that might sound silly but again if you look at something like uh and i think world of warcraft sort of suffers from this problem is that they've had you know 25 years of content they've had constant expansion releases building on top of one another for so long that right now the most popular version of the game is the classic version people just going back and playing it when it was simple when it was bare bones when they just that was when the game was most fun for them and of course part of that's nostalgia but some of it is just because simplicity is fun you get to just log in play you're chilling so for me i'm worried that as they add these new systems these formations these new talents i'm worried that for new players this is going to make it even more daunting to invest their time into this game and they might just say you know what forget it i'm gonna go play go play clash royale or clash of clans or whatever because it's easier to understand that might not be a great example i know clash has added a ton of new stuff in the last couple of years so I, I don't know but you get what i'm saying maybe a better example is fall guys right you just log in and you play the game you either die or you win that's pretty much it right anyway with that being said guys if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton go ahead and subscribe with the bell turned on so you get notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video we're so close to 40,000, so click that button comment down below what you think about all these changes are you excited for the changes do you think they're going to be horrible i really want to hear from you guys in the comment section below with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been omni i will talk to you guys again soon peace